So, welcome back <laughs> without the intro <laughs> straight into the stream. And uh, you can see here on the group flight, uh, already joined by many of our friends, Alex, Didi, Brennold, Gilend, already here. Um, I haven't heard from Jeremiah today. I'm not sure if he's uh, got time or not, but maybe not. And Brennold, hello to you. I think he's, he's, he's out of the house, he's ah. somewhere on traffic, mm. or on travel. Nice. So we are on real time, if I'm not completely mistaken. Yeah, on real time. And uh, so remember the approach here um, in the sunset last uh, last time? Ah, Jeremiah's just come home. Well, Jeremiah, if you have time, come on, start the PC, join us. Uh, we're just circling approach. I have to do this again uh, at some point. Um, that was absolutely spectacular. That was just such a brilliant approach. So we are now flying from here to Sierra Victor, Sierra Oscar. And I'm pretty sure we're going to have an interesting approach there as well. Flight time, about one hour. Always a very nice flight time. So, Major Buenaventura, vivas. Interesting names they have, right. And Brenda was saying that um, they have an RMP approach and uh, uh, let's see do they have a circling actually uh, no so they have no circlings authorized there I, th I would think because of the terrain situation yeah. but we have a uh, wind from zero to zero with 40 knots oh. maybe it's a lot of tailwind then well, 10 knots. Well, actually, nowadays it's 15 knots tailwind, so it should be okay. It's going to be crosswind, but yeah. um, so it's going to be challenging nonetheless. Now, when you look on the on the map, then you can see why there is no circling allowed because it's almost uh, it's short after the runway. There is already mountains. Yeah. yeah. So definitely going to be very challenging. Right, we're going to prepare quickly. Uh, import. So what time is it? 13, 10, 20, let's do it, 21, oh, 21, 5. And 15 minutes, can we do it? Yes, we can. So 190 at 6 here, 31 degrees, 1013. Good God, that's warm. That is very warm. Hey, hola, V pilot. They are very close to the equator. And uh, let me just check something. V pilot, V pilot, V pilot. Yeah, so Sierra Kilo. Just checking that that uh, you didn't give me uh, the scenery here. No, so yeah. Let me just check one of these airports if we fly to one of those soon. So, Sierra Kilo, Mount Papatango Oscar, you from India. Okay, now so, so, these are all airports outside of our routing here, but I mean, I'm going to try to find a city pair at some point that we can fly with the, uh, the tower prop, yeah. V Pilot, once again, thank you so much. Good. I was just going to go with one nine. Cost next is fast. Let's make it fifteen. And the cruising level is three nine zero. Well, that's a bit high for the Phoenix. Let's go three seven zero. Temperature currently thirty one degrees. That is warm. Fifty seven thousand feet drop of pause there. <laughs> How about that? So we depart south. Well, actually, yeah. No, that's going to be 26 if the wind is 190. Six, yes. and 190. So yeah. that's going to be Tolim or something. Tolim. One delta departure. Then we have the routing. And at the destination, we shall fly the Arna for BU. I will take the Arna for approach. A Zulu, I think. Okay, let me just check. Approach RMP Zulu. Yeah, that looks good. All right. And uh, 
we have no uh, no star, but we can use the CTN wire, I think. Okay, let me just check. Fire uh, Charlie Tango November, yeah, and then Uncut. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So Zulu. Uh, Flockzap, hello. How are you? And approach via Charlie Tango November. Insert. Excellent. That law looks good. In it A page, B page. Now I'm gonna go and load the aircraft ASAP. I think we, we saw already two preparations today. So we're just gonna do this quickly. Mass and balance, load aircraft, instant. There we go, 63.2 tons, take of weight. So I'm gonna do already the take performance calculations, dry runway. Uh, runway 26, sync the load sheet, 63.1. That looks good. Calculate flap one departure. How long is the runway here? 3,000, no, 2,000 meters. Ugh. It's one of those things. It's, I mean, the airport is already elevated at 4,500 feet. It's hot. 2,000 meters, and it gives us flaps one with a flex 50. Yeah, same for me. I think this cannot be correct. No. no. From experience, I I will, <laughs> at least I will reduce the flex temperature. Well, I'm going to put config two and toga fours. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I have my doubts. Yeah, Alex, I, I'll force flaps two as well and toga. I'm not going to. I'm gonna, not going to chance it. I mean, if you go off the end of the runway, it's going to hurt. 100. percent So. Uh, fly at Bombay, Mumbai. I've been to Mumbai not too long ago because I was flying there IRL and then I, um, I did that. Um, flight prior here on stream. I'm pretty sure 60, no, 55.6, 55.6, zero fuel weight CG 31.4. Full is 7.6, and alternate fuel requirement is 2.1. Okay, 2.1. Smart cast black box. Yeah, danke schön. Is running. Wind request. Second, I just copy that link. Cool. Nice. Let's start the APU. The rest of the items is finished. And then we're already good to go. Hello. Hi, Jeremiah. Hi, Jeremiah. Good evening. My sim is not ready yet. Uh, it will last a few minutes. No worries, no worries. Nobody has departed yet, so all good. Nice spool up of the APU there. Very nice. So here, if you did a transit, so if you came and landed here, 30 minute transit, and then departed again, I think that could be one of those situations where you could actually get a hot engine start or kind of an over EGT hot start. And you maybe need to crank a minute yep. before. Yeah, 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 exactly. So Toga flaps two or correct. Excellent. Right, let's go P. If you bleed on, ramp out off. So preparation checklist, key pins, covers removed, fuel quantity, 7,600 kilograms, balanced, 
Then we have... Seatbelts on. ADRs. Enough. Fuel quantity seven. No, fuel quantity. Disregard. Power ref. QNH one zero one three is set. Uh, see preparation checklist complete. I'm just wondering because of the door why that's not closed. Ground services. Let's close that. Oh, <laughs> no, that was going. There we go. That was already gone. Jeremiah, parking number four is still available. Okay. So I'm going to push non standard this way so I can do a sharp. I actually can line up here as well, it's just in case someone else wants to push back. Can you always trust the taxi taxi lines in regards of wingspan clearance? Uh, with an A320, usually yes. Yeah. I think for me here it looks when a A320 is taxiing past me, he will hit my tail with a with the wing. I we mean, can no, try that right now. <laughs> Well, not, so if I look from the outside view, it should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Usually they wouldn't they wouldn't um, build these aprons so close that you can't taxi past with uh, medium exercise aircraft because then it would be limited to you know the lot smaller aircraft. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, they should build in cameras in the wingtips so that the captain can easily see if he um, if he don't hit a, any other aircraft or light light masts or so. But then you have some clever controllers. I mean, financial controllers in the company saying, well, that costs so many millions per year and, and blah. And, and how often do we actually have taxi incidents? And you know, those are insured. <laughs> so, hey, Hayden, how are you doing? Yeah, but I think, but uh, su such a system in an aircraft costs maybe twenty thousand dollars or so, and one uh, incident, a taxi incident, can can easily cost millions of dollars. No, uh, the wings have parking sensors. No, no. Oh, no, there's no sensors here anywhere. <laughs> no, you mean like in the car? No. Cockpit to ground. Yeah, why we not? Have a good start. <laughs> you can disconnect. Shouldn't be that expensive, and maybe it helps. <laughs> but I always think like, if it makes sense, and they haven't implemented it, it's because of costs. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. it's just you know, there's so many things in aviation where you like, okay. That doesn't make sense, but hey. 
what authorities have to tell them. Yeah. You, you have you have to implement that. Yeah. very quick today with your preparation yeah indeed well it, it started everything started on time and that kind of helped throughout the uh, the day and I am the slowest don't worry at least we'll see you landing then later on usually we don't see you landing <laughs> today we'll see it yeah all right all clear so let's check the flight controls up down neutral left right neutral rudder left right neutral after start checklist uh anti ice off ecom status checked pitch trim down 0 0.2 rudder trim neutral checklist complete Good. Taxing out. Backtracking. Let's see. I should be able to go sharp. Oh, actually, this is right. Shouldn't have taken that. Yeah. Well. Anyways. So You're going to the walk wrong runway. No. There is only one runway, so I can go left <laughs> once I've entered. Yeah, I mean the wrong direction. Yeah, initially, yes. But I thought I'd rather get out of everyone's way. Make sure that nobody's taking off, nobody arriving. No, all good. Is the stream title correct? Why? What's it say? One Inch Nart Columbia Tour? Yeah, I think so. Maybe you need to refresh the browser. Columbia um, not written with uh, a uniform after the Lima? No, somebody said uh, it's not Columbia, it's Columbia with O. Really? Yeah, so he complained. I said, okay, okay, I'll change it. <laughs> Aviation TR, hello. So, just waiting for the cabin crew to get ready. Got the strobes on already. Heavy <laughs> one, boom. No, 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 all good. 80 knots. Two six will turn around. So this is what I mean with the display threshold, guys. So you are allowed to taxi, taxi here. You're allowed to take off in this part. However, you're not allowed to touch down on landing in this part. It could be because of obstacle clearances. Usually that's the case to clear the approach obstacles. That's why they, they move the touchdown zone further down. But it could also have to do with runway strength, pavement strength, and so on. Although I think that would be a bit unusual. But still, you know, just saying. So whatever you do, you cannot touch down prior to the piano keys. I.e., if you touch down here, tower sees it, or you get reported, that would definitely be a serious incident. 
in Bremen, we actually have a an area for the um, for the A3 or Airbus um, Super Gubi or Gubi. Or is, it, is it called Super Gubi? No, Beluga. Sorry, it's called Beluga these days. So Beluga transport aircraft. And only the beluga is allowed to taxi into that area. If you actually accidentally taxi into the area without permission, you will get reported, and that is actually a runway overrun with all the consequences, i.e. you could get fined heavily. Um, you could get into really, 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 really serious uh, trouble. So, Okay, everything's ready. Let's do the... Taxi checklist, flight controls checked, flap setting config 2, radar predictive mission system on and auto, ECA memo, no, sorry, engine mode selector is normal, and ECA memo takeoff no blue. That's the taxi checklist completed, lineup checklist, takeoff runway is 26 full length, TCAS, T A R A, and pack 1 and 2 is off. So, Toga Power takeoff. Are we ready? We are ready. Take off. Man Toga SRS Auto Thrust Blue. Thrust set. Acceleration is actually pretty good today. 100 knots checked. Oh, that hump is pretty mean, isn't it? V1, rotate. Oh, that's the end of the runway. Yeah, I'm a bit skeptical. Was well, rate gear up? I'm skeptical. I think if you're not careful, then uh, flex takeoff, flaps one, that could actually cause an overrun. Alex, I'll wait for your taxiing. Thrust climb, climb out blue, and we have a speed limit of 185 knots. So I'm going to just to put the flaps to one in a minute. Autopilot is on. So flaps one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Bought some Colombian coffee. Oh, I, I think I would love to have some, some good coffee from there. I love coffee, so. So six three above, we got that. Next one, oh, packs out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then we got uh, eight one already covered as well. Fantastic, and that's why you have those speed restrictions. You have a virtual airline called Coffee Air. Nice. That's a very original name as well. Flaps zero. Speed checked. Flaps zero. Spoilers. And Lewis, hello. Aviation TR. You've got the chrono. You're right. I did. Starting that. Good catch. Aviation TR. You are from Bremen? What? What a surprise, I am as well near Bremen, so... Small world, right? Lewis, welcome back, how are you? Have you been flying, Lewis? Here's 10,000, magenta, so it says below 10,000 till that waypoint, not star. So it's going to say out constraint. OK, 
Clyde Armed. What should say? Alt Constraint. Yeah, there we go. Alt Constraint. Clyde Armed. Uh, I'm going to go 3 5 initially. It says 3 7. Well, 3 6 is optimal. Let's go 350. That's fine. So 3 5 0. And there. And speed increasing. There we go. Climb. Alt blue. 35,000. Up we go. Not much flying. I work on a safety officer. Ah, okay. Well, that's that's that also sounds very interesting. Having uh, you know some other duties, just like uh, for a safety officer. Very nice. This is called the coffee triangle area. Nice. Uh, Bergsing Club, are uh, you quite struggling with getting stable on the localizer, for example, doing raw da data ILS flying? Do you have any tips for getting in there? Yeah. So the thing is, um, the initial thing you have to get right is get onto the localizer and then check the drift angle route. So that little green triangle, I don't know what the diamond, that, that green diamond, that shows you where the aircraft is drifting to. So once you have that that localizer um, lined up, make sure that you get that drift pointer lined up as well. Then if you have to, if you are deviating left or right, try to use that drift angle pointer um, to an extent that allows you to smoothly re-intercept that. And then once you are on that again, adjust the heading so that the the uh, drift angle uh, diamond is then again centered on the, lo on the ILS. Uh, you also have that here in the headings scale there. You see that? Right. So that's something you need to, to help you align um, the aircraft with on final. So anything else I have in here? Ratnav, secondary, copy active. Rest was all clear. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that looks also like a very interesting city there. Look at that. The valley. How cool. Ah, up we go. High terrain. Uh, in my opinion, the best coffee is from that region. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I had coffee from this area at some point um, without knowing it, probably. But I just, I, I love coffee, man. I, I, I couldn't live without coffee, obviously, so. Um, do you primarily use the NAF display or the lower part of the prime flight display? Um, usually, I would I would uh, use the NAF display more. But so, so the thing is, so on final you have your your localizer diamond here as well, right? That magenta diamond, and then you can actually use that very nicely as well. But try it out, see what helps you best. Tony, hello to you. I'm doing well. How are you, Tony? Ryan, hello. And Athava, hello to you. Right, here we go. Transition standard is set. Looking good. Loving it. Uh, so... Yeah, I am planning. I'm going to try to get that because uh, I know. Um, I've been gifted some sceneries from V-Pilot. Um, so 
So I'm going to try to find uh, and, and land at these airports. And I know some of them you only can land with the ATRs, really. Not with any jets. Uh, Tony, you're flying Miami to Havana. Nice. Also, very nice routing. Yeah. Look at that. 15,000 above. No problem at all. Fly in event on April 6th. Um, April 6th. Let me see. I, I can't promise anything. It's April 6th. Maybe. I... I although, hang on. No, I'm flying on, on in real life on that day. No, I have a real-world flight on that weekend, I'm afraid. Sorry. Uh, Armenia. Uh, Sierra Kilo Alfa Romeo. Okay. So, uh, V-Pilot, what routing would you suggest with the ATR? Oh, next flight is to Sierra. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Hang on. Let me just check. Yeah, we are. We're flying to Sierra Kila of Romeo, El Aden Airport next week. Uh, next, well, next flight sometime. Yeah. Well, we are flying. So, V Pilot, the next flight we're doing is. Okay, so let me just write that down. Zero kilo unit from India. Okay, let me try that then, yeah, because you, you give to me the... Okay, try. Yeah, I'll try. Okay, I've noted it down, so don't forget. Uh, am I Bruno? No, I'm not Bruno. No, I'm Black Box. <laughs> so Bruno is one of my moderators. Uh, and, uh, well, I would love to cross the pond. The problem is, during that time, we have a huge renovation work going on. Uh, so depending on how my internet connection is still working and um, that I can use my, my office, then, um, yeah, I would love to fly along on, on across the pond. Black box. Our yep. today routing is uh, going right over Bogota today. Is it really? Yeah, maybe you have some good visuals. Nice. So let me just get airport infos in here. Uh, Sierra Kilo Mike Alpha, and then let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's in the middle of the of the track. Okay, almost. Oh yeah, right. It's not even that far away. Cool. Uh, am I again? I'm uh, watching Eurovision. What's Eurovision? Uh, hello to I can't pronounce. I can't read that name. But hello on YouTube. How are you? Nice to see you. Eurovision. Well, the song contest for local. No, I, I. If you mean the song contest, no, I don't. I don't watch that. I'm afraid. Black box. One question to the routing. Mm -hmm. um, I look to the Charlie Tango November VR, where we do a very sh steep left turn, and regarding the um, FMS, we have there still 288 knots. Mm -hmm. Would you reduce the speed for that, or, or yeah. do you mean it? Uh, no, I would, definitely, work. I would definitely reduce the speed. Okay. But then we are uh, still on 11,000 feet, so before the uh, speed reduction to 250. Let me just check. Uh, so from Charlie Tank November, we have 21 miles to Ankut. And then we have 5 miles to the final, and then we have another 10 miles. So 15, we have 15, about 36 miles from Charlie Tank November. Elevation is 
a thousand feet, so that's not too much. So I would cross Charlie Tango November at well, if you go ten thousand feet there, two hundred well, two hundred fifty knots, so that should be okay. Um, says 288 knots was 11,450 feet. Mm. Well, that's optimum. But I, I don't okay. think I don't I think that's very optimistic. So I'm going to put 240 knots as a constraint, and I'm going to put 10,000 feet exactly at Charlie Tang November. So that way it can calculate the descent a bit better. Okay. No, I mean it's fine. I mean if people enjoy Eurovision, that's all good. Um, it's just for me, um, I'm, for one, I don't play any musical instruments. Um, I don't have, I, I listen to music, yes, um, all kinds of different music. Um, but the Eurovision Song Contest, I don't know, it's, it's never fascinated me to any extent. So but the same thing with football. I don't watch German football. Again, it's it's just something I don't. I don't really enjoy. Um, next problem. Hmm. Have a look again into the MCU. You will see after Charlie Tang in November, there is the limit constraint in, uh, in with 250 50 knots. Do we need to clear this out maybe? Mm, interesting that, it, well, no. Or you can, although I'm maybe otherwise the Airbus will um, accelerate from 240 to 250 again. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm, I'm wondering if you enter in the real aircraft, you enter a speed constraint 240 knots, then it should actually automatically lead to 10,000 foot 250 knots. I at least I, I would think so, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a little buck here in, mm. in this uh, special situation. No. Who's the guy in the background? That's one of my moderators, uh, Brennold. He's the person that has literally, well, not not all of the One Engine Out tours, but uh, most of them. So um, the Colombian tour, Brennold, you, you made the Colombian tour as well, correct? Yes, Colombian tour. Okay, so it's from me. Yeah, so 90% of the other ones are also from me. Yeah. So on our one engine out virtual airline, um, we have many, many, many tours, VFR, IFR, long range, short range, medium range, all kinds all around the world. And the cool thing is you get some very nice ideas on, uh, you know, some very nice routings to fly. And uh, here, for example, I don't know if I ha would have come here uh, apart from maybe Bogota or Quito. Um, to fly around here uh, because of that tour we've already seen so many interesting places with so many beautiful and challenging approaches and when you um are you flying these uh, one engine or tours you see a kind of progress no. i think you don't earn something with the tours but it's fun i think you see a progress you uh, when you complete the tour you get a little a what black box maybe you can show the awards you already earned yeah let me just check uh so just a question from uh uh aviation tr um you said um i was a 77 pilot in p3d and had no idea about 320 i watched your 820 playlist and i learned how to fly the 820 thanks a lot well aviation tr thanks for watching my videos <laughs> i'm very happy to hear that uh that uh, it, it uh, helped you. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to come in here and uh, and uh, send me the uh, thank you. Much appreciated. Cross the pond three forty six hundred. I I did the last one in the three forty six hundred. I think. Um, so this time I would actually. I mean, even a shared flight would be possible if if the app is out by then. Uh, Brennald, no, Brennald is not a real world pilot, although he has a good friend, um, and so he does fly in real life along with his friend. Um, in real life. So Brennell does have a good knowledge on aviation. Yeah. Everything learned from Black Box <laughs> since in seven years or so. Yeah. But I mean, you, you learned a lot from, from uh, Herbert as well. So Yeah, of course. So and I see, I, I watch a lot of videos about mm. aviation. Yeah. 
So my rewards, hang on, where's my rewards? Uh, um, click on Pilot Center in yeah. the top menu there. Yeah. So there we go. So I have that's some group flight award. I have a medal, uh, greaser, uh, 50 hour award, 100 hour award. I have uh, some more medals. Uh, then I have uh, most difficult three medal. I have finished the part of the uh, European tour. I finished the Norway tour, Iceland tour. So there we go. So there's lots which, of- uh, Which virtual airline is that? Uh, sorry, say again? Which virtual airline is that? Um. Oh, that's uh, Athava. Uh, can you didn't uh, just dial down your volume a bit? Uh, so which what is what? <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. I don't know which VA is it. Oh, the VA, virtual airline. It's it's called One Engine Out. So it's oneengineout.org. And you don't Maybe have to. You can send a link. Yeah. So so you don't have to fly one engine out just to make sure that you know you can fly with all engines on um but we, we looked for a a funny kind of name for virtual airline the name is really good yeah it, it's it's like um it's you have no obligations it's free and you get a free little app as well to lock your flights and um yeah it's it's absolutely there's no nothing that you have to do it's all for fun, but um, I can see that many, many people here fly every day. And we even have someone who who passed 20,000 hours, flight hours on the virtual airline here. I think it's already 22,000 or yeah. so. That's a lot. Yeah, that is, that is uh, unbelievable. It's more than I have in real life. <laughs> so that says a lot. Yeah. And the virtual airline has only been in place for how many years now? Eight, seven? Yeah, eight years, I think. I think that person can get an ADP on that basis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's really funny. And like people fly for long hours, like, I can see that. Yeah, and, and, and again, a lot of people often don't have, you know, a good plan or idea where to fly. And these tours actually give you some nice examples. Um, and the good thing is these, these routings um, you will get um, also an idea how long the flight is. So when you go onto Tour Center, let's say uh, you're wondering about a flight, Canary flight, let's say, and uh, it gives you an average duration of the flight time, so you get a good idea. Um, some very helpful stuff there. It uh, works worldwide or in uh, specific regions? Like um, so I say again. Uh, does it work in a specific uh, region? Or like, is it worldwide? Oh, it's worldwide. So the tours, again, you can or also you can make your own flights. Um, so you can log on the on the virtual airline. You can log your own flight. So let's say you have, you know, a certain flight you want to do uh, today. Then you can make your own flights as well, and unlock those. So. Uh, I don't disclose which airline I work for, um, so I will always just in say um, people, what I, people what will I, keep on asking, like which airline do you work in, and like I think all airlines have the social media policy, like you cannot tell which airline you work in. Yeah, like, so, so the thing is, yeah, the thing is, the problem is if if I start kind of publishing, naming the airline I work for it can be seen as advertising oh, so i, I don't want it. yeah so you've got to be careful um because if you if you advertise for certain things so if i if i were naming a certain brand of car all the time for example then people can say hey he's he's actually advertising for cars you know and and so on so you can get here in germany so you can get in trouble for doing that yeah, but right now you're advertising for Avianca, maybe, or <laughs> other airlines. 
which delivery you well, are flying. But I could say I'm flying all kinds. So today I flow Adria, which is not existent anymore. Um, so I don't only fly one one certain airline. So I, you know, it's it's not specific for one uh, certain airline. Uh, so let's see what someone else. I just fly information. The link on your website still points to one. Oh, hang on. Uh, the link on your website still points to one engine .com. Okay. On the bottom right. Okay, there we go. Yeah, thanks for the for the note. <laughs> well, hey Toto, how are you? Maybe doing? Sencha has to have a look on that. Yeah, yeah. So Thank Black Box, you're vibrated on uh, which aircraft? Right now on the seven eight seven triple seven. Oh that's great. Yeah, very nice aircraft. Well, the seven, I haven't flown the triple seven yet, but the seven eight seven is fantastic. Uh, like, which one is like a more like kind of a butter machine? Like, which leans like a seven eight seven or the triple seven? Well, I think the triple seven is very similar to the seven eight seven. Um, so, flyby wire system, um, even the electrical system, hydraulic system. There's so many um, similarities. And uh, so that's why actually you can fly both types with one type rating. So this is kind of a joint type rating. Yeah. And, uh, yeah so like in India, hmm? in India, like uh, as far as I know, like uh, pilots can only fly, fly one type of aircraft, like only one type rating. Yeah, it, that's the thing. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. It depends on the countries and the regulations there. Um, Another example would be, for example, uh, as an example, um, there's airlines or there's countries that allow uh, the 77 to fly ETOPS up to 300 minutes as a standard value. Here in Germany, oh. the 77 only got a permission to fly ETOPS uh, for 180 minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so like the 330 and 340 at shared type. Yeah. So they can do that. Um, like the triple seven X is a similar corporate to the seven X. Like I, I don't usually see the Boeing corporates, but like what I was like to make out, like this, it it is much more similar to the seven X. Yeah, yeah. So the the triple seven X is literally a seven X seven cockpit these days. Yeah. Um, they have uh, new things like touch screens, which the seven X seven doesn't have yet. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the, the whole setup is, is literally a 787 now. I guess over the over, in the over panel, hydraulic wise, fuel pump wise, it has obviously some more buttons, but otherwise from the autopilot system, FMS, it's, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. So like, uh, where do you put like when you're planning for group flights, like where do you put it in? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. It's... No, like uh, if you're planning a group flight, so where oh. do you put it in? Yeah, so if you go to our Discord um, on the group flight, so what you can do if you want to get notifications and you want to fly along, yeah, um, go and have a look on the announcement channel right on top. Gotcha. Gotcha. And just scroll a little bit more and. Hang on, uh, Brandon, where did you put the uh, the command for how to get notifications? Um, this is in the um, in the rules section. Ah, rules. Okay, sorry. So go to the rules section. Brandon made an announcement how you can yeah. you can sign up for the notifications. Yeah, yeah. So okay. slash rank group flight and then you will be getting gotcha. notifications and you can see then the channel he, as well. He should have the rank, otherwise he couldn't join to our channel here. No, no, like right now I just got the rank of the group flight, okay. so yeah, yeah you have the group flight. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so next time you Not should sure. be able to, to receive uh, notifications when you do one. Yeah. Thank you, V Chris. Oops. <laughs> um, and uh, Turnsy, thanks for the rate. Welcome. What have you been up to? Greetings. <laughs> yeah, the, the folding wings. Well, I mean, it, more like folding wing tips. Right. Uh, 
Oh, I did. saw a documentation yeah. on YouTube about future aircrafts, and they are working on aircrafts which can fold the wings in flight. For some reason. Mm -hmm. In flight. Yeah. Well, I guess I, maybe f aircraft that go very, very fast, supersonic. I don't know. I, I don't. Not, not super, maybe supersonic, but I think wings. it's uh, for fuel saving or something like that. Okay. Maybe it is a kind of F-14 type, like swept wing design. It can be that, like, like that. Yeah, sim yeah, so it's kind of similar effect, yeah. But I have, I've not heard of that yet, so kind of futuristic uh, stuff. And, I will uh, have a look if, yeah. if I can find this again, and I will send it to you. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Turnsy, you did ADC in Dusseldorf. Nice. I haven't been to Dusseldorf on Watson for ages. Yeah, I have to put that on my list again. Um, Aviation TR... Why is the smart cars not for free? It is free. This, uh, the, uh, Reynolds, the bas basic version, is it still free, smart cars? The version for uh, which you can use for our air airline is free. There is only one person who has to pay for it, and that's me. Yeah. So the basic version, have a look for that, should be free, smart cars. You, you don't need to buy it from the developer, TFDI. You can download it from from our website and that's free for you yeah so Bernard, are you also a real pilot i uh, say again please is uh, Bernard also a real world pilot no Bernard, uh he's he's uh very very enthusiastic about aviation and he does fly in he's real life a lot he flies along in real real life with a friend um, but mm -hmm. otherwise, he's just been flight simming and he's gathered his uh, knowledge from many years of flight simming. Yeah. He's yeah. only a wannabe pilot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, Tenzi, come tomorrow. To, just, I, tomorrow, I have no. Uh, tomorrow evening, I'm already out the house, unfortunately. Uh, uh, yep, it's basically a kind of variable wing geometry. But that is extremely fuel inefficient insofar as it only makes sense when flying supersonic. That's what I thought, yeah. At that point, fuel economy is going out the window here. Absolutely. Unless they find some amazing new propulsion system that uh, that is somehow a lot more efficient. Uh, Aviation TR. Yeah, sorry. One more question because I've got lots of questions coming in from the chat as well. So go ahead with one more question. Yeah, well, uh, Athaba, go ahead. Yeah, so like, uh, if you're not available on 6th, uh, whenever, if you're able, uh, come to Mumbai, like, I'll make sure that you get yeah, I will try. Or... Yeah, I will try, but I can't promise because I think uh, I'm going to have a real world flight on that weekend. No worries, no worries. Okay, but thanks like, for the... whenever possible. Thank, yeah. thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and then we got um, the question, or oh, somebody was coming to. Oh, I don't know, maybe. I think I'm taking pilot training in Hungary. What do you think about that? Well, I I don't have much experience with, you know, flight schools, even in Germany. Now that the flight school that I went to was closed down, um, I have I have very little knowledge about these things. I'm afraid. Um, so the only advice I can give you is try to find some people online, um, you know, in dedicated aviation forums that have gone through the training there, or, you know, can give you some, some, you know, personal experience, um, because anything else is going to be difficult to, to comment on. Just live stream the real world flight, lol, yeah. Right. Oh, oh, we passed Bogota, yeah, you're right. It was fully cloud covered. Ah, yeah. couldn't see anything. Okay, that's a shame. Ramjet flying Mach 5 at 100,000 feet plus, as maybe, but anything based on conventional turbojet 9, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then Toto, I mean, the bigger the aircraft gets, you know, I'm just thinking about even the Concorde was pretty much maxed out at Mach 2, right? 
So, you know, having a design like the Concorde, um, I don't know, in, as a passenger aircraft with a passenger cabin where people can actually, you know, sit there without being put to sleep for the flight and still enjoy a meal and, and you know, that kind of stuff. It, it's hard to pr imagine, at least for me, it's hard to imagine. The top of descent is coming up. Yeah, just going to get fetched the latest weather here. Yeah, that's why it heated up so much. Uh, and that was like, it was at its design limit regarding its, uh, you know, its metal skin and so on. Macbox, slick quartz mixture you have. Uh, say again, what, what do I have? What specs do you have for a PC? Um... Let me just copy those over. So I'll publish that on uh, on YouTube. Hold on. There we go. Hey, Roger, thank you. So let's go weather arrival. Oh, there's no METAR available. Uh, Breno, do you have uh, the data by any chance? Yeah, um, it is. Uh, the wind is zero one zero with ten. Yeah. And we have 34 degrees. And 1008 is the pressure. Thank you very much. That is entered. Bear in mind the static pressure at level 600 is only 5% at sea level. Good God. Yeah, pretty much the same as a vacuum, yeah. And it's, it's those things, I mean, we're not talking about rocket flights, right? So, you know, people um, going in and um, aware of the fact that they might, they may not come back, right? So, uh, you know, you want to have a, a safety level that's, that's more than 50%, right? Zero zero eight. Welcome aboard the uh, Captain let's Black Box Twitch Conflict channel. Four or trust off landing weight. Could new subscribers please make your way to the first class cabin? Where oh, complimentary drinks, snacks, and premium right flight entertainment will be served. Anyway, I just had another thank jingle you. on the other side. Give me a second. Uh, thank you much for the anonymous gift gifting sub to Toto. Thank you so much for that. And uh, go ahead again with your question. Uh, I was saying, like, uh, you're unconnected to the network. Uh, I, I don't know what it is with, with my settings here. It's very hard to, to understand you. How about now? Yeah, try again. Yeah, I was saying that uh, you're unconnected to the WhatsApp network. Uh, no, no, we're not connected to the VATSIM network right now. No, we, on the group flights that we do, um, we are on the European West server on Microsoft. So it's a group flight server, European West. Okay, okay. Uh, because um, not everyone is comfortable on, on VATSIM. So we want to have, you know, people here in the community fly along and get the chance to fly along, um, even if they are, you know, not on VATSIM. Roger, Roger. Like... I just got uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator today. Oh, nice. Okay. Just yeah, okay. Yeah. Enjoy. So, landing weight is 60 tons, 60.5. Alright, so land distance is good. We have 3,000 meters available. Approach wise, we said we're going to fly the RMP. Yeah, I mean, the Concorde had such small windows because in case of a decompression, the air would not be rushing out too quickly through those little windows. So the the air coming in through the, 
the, the ventilation or the pack system was enough to kind of stabilize the, the pressure inside the cabin. Um, but, you know, if you're flying 100,000 feet, I don't know, I guess no windows at all, right? There would no be there would be no window seats because it wouldn't have windows. <laughs> that would be my guess. But even the space shuttle have had um, windows, but they are very very thick. Then I think. Yeah, they they must be five, really five centimeter mm -hmm. thick. Yeah, windows. I, I would say so. Yeah. They were differently designed for the space. Like you have like small debris moving at a velocity of bullet yeah so there and and i'm sure that would be extremely expensive i mean the space shuttle how many billions yes, did it yes, cost yes. yeah so i mean we talk about civil aviation right you can't you can't ask for an aircraft to you know cost you know three or four billion yeah the cost was uh, project cost for space shuttle was 211 billion dollars yeah there we go yeah so that's that's and, what i mean yeah and the poor launch cost was uh 450 million dollars yeah. usd yeah so that will definitely not be uh you know efficient for general aviation or yeah. uh, i guess definitely not yeah. So that's really about flight speed, not strictly in vehicles. Okay, there we go. So, um, yeah, Jeff, you have the same view on XBL right now. The the data here is not the best, so they haven't really updated um, the um, the scenery in the sense of um, oh, what's it called the. Um, the mesh there we go the mesh so that's why it does look a bit crude here yeah the world updates um isn't there maybe a mesh or so from orbix hmm. for south america yeah. okay so vova uh, bring it vova writes he downloaded from the one engine out after installation it asks him to subscribe as a as a pilot for 399 per month and six ninety nine as a community. Thank you. What he's doing something? No, that can't be true. Who is that? Uh, on, on YouTube, someone's writing that. Vova Sabaski. Okay. Um, maybe he can um, write me a message in Discord. Then mm -hmm. we will find it out. Yeah. Uh, on on Twitch, we got Jilen saying you can you can skip the TFDI login page. So there's two options. You have a login for TFDI, ignore that. And there is a login for the v virtual airlines. And there you would have the virtual airline one inch out. And if you log in there, these should not be charged. Yeah, but like uh, Brennan offered you, uh, Volva, try it on our Discord, see if you can get contact with um, Brennan. Yeah. He'll try to sort you out. Good. So we've done the preparations. Minimums uh, is 1490. And it's a non precision approach. So we're going to put in Sierra Victor, Sierra Oscar 30 in there. That's 60 miles, 18,000. Yeah, looks good. That looks good. This gives you the direct um, distance to the airport, but you are flying a longer, much longer distance. Yeah, but on final, that will help me then later After on. After the final, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, once. so now I'm, I'm, I'm referencing myself to the Charlie Tang and the uh, November View R. So it's got 60 miles. I have to lose 18,000 feet until then. So 18 times 3 is uh, 54 minus the reduction in speed. So I know that's correct regarding the path. And then once I'm past Charlie Tank November, I will reference myself to the to the runway. Just so that it's it's you know I'm not totally relying on the on the VNAV calculations of the FMS.
because that can be misleading sometimes. Yeah. On my last flight in A310, I had some problems with that. Mm. I, I, I totally relied on the top of descent, which calculated me the FMC. And then I was on a point where I should be on 2000 feet. I was on 9000 feet. Mm. So I had to do some circles to make the landing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you learn from, from mistakes. Yeah, long runway, so I'm going to have auto brake low. Fantastic. Cool. All right. Seat belts are on. We're going to go down to 10,000 now. So that's double oh eight. There we go. And let's read a checklist. So approach checklist bar ref 1008 is set. Seat belts are on. Minimum bar row 1490 set. Auto brake is low and engine mode selector is normal. Approach checklist complete. Uh, there's a missed approach step turn. Uh, climb 500 feet, then heading 300 to Egipu and then left. Okay, you have to fly to Egipu, left, Gelmu, climb 6000. Am I from Germany? Yes, I am. I am indeed. Uh, Aviation TR, I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but there is no real pilot around me. There's some times I'm curious. No, that's fine. So uh, Aviation TR, I'm, I'm you know, always happy to answer questions. If I if I can't give you a good answer, I will I will say so as well. Um, what is the family life of the pilot like? Okay, so I can tell you that it's complicated in parts. Um, as a pilot, you are unable. Well, it depends. So. It depends on what airline you work for. There's airlines where you have a base somewhere and you are actually home every night. So you have early shift, late shift, maybe night shift. But in principle, you are at home. You never sleep anywhere in a hotel. Uh, there's also airlines as well that have you on rotations. They can be three, four, five, six, seven days long. And uh, during that time, you were sleeping in hotels. And so you are going to be away from home. And that's what it has been the case for me for yeah, 30 years now. And um, that makes it very difficult regarding family life and regarding your social life. So I've not been able to attend any um, or, or be in any kind of you know clubs like football club or um, tennis club, whatever, um, because simply I, I just don't have a regular schedule uh, to be there. You know, every Tuesday or every Friday or every weekend, whatever. Um, yeah, next topic is weekends and, uh, you know, holidays like Easter and, and, and Christmas and so on. Um, you will miss a lot of these um, these um, venues over time if you are, you know, away from home. And um, yeah, so it's <laughs> the advantage is you'll be home at times where other people are working so you know that's also sometimes an advantage um, but i would say if you have a partner um they would need to be very flexible um in their schedule and they would be required to be very self um self motivated in life meaning they would pursue their own career maybe or um you know whatever they do because yeah you know being a being an airline pilot very often means you'll be away from home you're absent and um yeah then long range so if you fly long range um another topic will be um jet lag so if you if you work a lot and you are abroad a lot or fly a lot um, on long range, then yes, jet lag definitely hits you hard. Um, I've, I've actually just met a friend again who's in my my class, met my flight school class, and he was actually flying on long range, and I just met him, 
and he's actually coming back to short range because he says he can't sleep properly anymore and he, he's just got so exhausted and that his doctor said to him that he should go back to short range for that reason so um, good night I'll be going thank you so much yeah yeah thank you yeah bye bye what sports am I doing jogging with German shepherds no we're cycling we Chris cycling <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what sports? I, I used to go jogging a lot. Um, I played golf. I, I went jogging a lot. Um, but then my knees got a little bit worse. And so I started taking up cycling and, and actually do cycle a lot um, these days, which I enjoy. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, fitness for an airline pilot, uh, good, good. Um, diet a good diet and uh you know good kind of stress management and uh exercise is 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 the key to remain healthy and fly for a very long time at, at the moment alex i don't play golf at, at the moment i've stopped for now but maybe I'll, I'll take it up again when i retire my best handicap was three <laughs> three over three point one to be exact but right now, I, I don't know, probably more like 20 at the moment, but... Um, the lower number, the better? Yeah. Below five, I mean, with the five and better, you can actually get become a professional, at least a professional teacher. Wow. Uh, what are the differences between raw data, LS, and flying the same approach with flat? Well, that's the difference. So raw data would normally be um, called an approach without guidance and guidance means the flight director oh goalkeeper yeah so man my dad he he pulled the plug back then when i was a kid yeah i was i was i was good goalkeeper and uh yeah and then he pulled the plug for me becoming a golf professional as well <laughs> <laughs> so I had to become a pilot, right? I mean, how horrible is that? <laughs> no, it's no joke. No joke. I actually, I, as a kid, I dreamt of becoming a, a goalkeeper, professional goalkeeper. And then later, um, my my golf instructor in the UK, in, in England actually said to me, I would have to tell it to become a golf pro. But in the end, I am I am I am happy I didn't become a pro. My best handicap was three point one. When will we play basketball? Uh, we'll have to see. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not as fit as I used to be, right? So let's see. Let's continue down 4,000 here in the turn. Speed brakes are out. Tight turn here for the. Come on, turn! <laughs> the golf stories. Right, so there you go. Continue down. Speed breaks out. Cool. Uh, track marks is now 30. Yeah, we have to lose 8,000 feet. Well, eight and a half. So that looks good. When flying manually with flight director on, do I use the flight indication? Yes, yes, you do. So whenever you have flight director guidance, you will use that. If you don't use it, turn it off. That's the philosophy. I am going to go ahead, start slowing down. Thrust idle. Beautiful. I'm 
I'm just getting a little bit high in the path. Uh, we have 26 miles. Yeah, we should be all right. Flaps one, speed check, flaps off. Uh, to fly to Istanbul, and and you mean on uh, on stream? Um, I've been to Istanbul a number of times. Um, not lately, though. I will admit. Use a little bit more speed brakes. So energy management quite often is the key. Right now we have more options available. As as we get lower and lower, the options get less and less. So now if I get down to let's say 190 knots, able to go flat two at any time. And then once I'm on path, I'll stow the speed brakes again. It's a bit early for flap two right now, but... Um here we go. Let's go speed brakes back in. Let's see if we can keep the path here. Good. 4,000 feet that it is. And 4,000 is where we leave Vuzvo. And the final push point officially would be Dormo, two and a half thousand for the final descent. Didi is there with a Phantom? GG's. He's a lot quicker than us. Beautiful. Look at the reflections there on the river. Amazing. Very pretty. So I'm going to dial in 2,500 now. Do you watch Tour de France? No. Even though I do cycle a lot, I, have, I don't know. It's it's these things. I I don't spend that much time in front of a TV screen. Um. So I don't watch, I used to watch a lot of golf, I will admit that. So things like, you know, the Masters or uh, the Open, uh, I would watch that completely. But otherwise, I don't, I, I just do not spend that much time in front of the television. Here goes, speed managed, just checking that the approach mode is active. Flaps two, speed is checked, flaps two. Yeah, you're okay. Okay, yes, yeah, strictly speaking, my monitor is a TV. Yeah, okay, I get it. But uh, <laughs> there's a good reason for that, Rob. <laughs> but I get your point. Touche. <laughs> we are approaching, no, we are, we are doing a R enough approach. So 4,000, next step down is two and a half. And the reason why I don't press the approach button just yet is because once we get over that point, that deviation bar could flip down and then the aircraft would dive down really drastically trying to catch that path. There we go. 
gears coming down. And now we're going to go approach. So we've got speed, final approach. Now I can dial in 6,000 missed approach. Flaps three, speed is checked. Flaps three. And the spoilers. <laughs> Flaps full, speed check. Flaps full. Lovely area. Look at the the, the rivers. Two thousand five hundred is checked. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Gonna wait for the checklist. Eight knots tailwind, Brennell. Just as a word of caution. Okay. <laughs> Bremen is better. Maybe yeah. Maybe we need auto break medium instead of low? Well, we have 3,000 something meters um, right now. Okay. I, we should be good. Line of checklist. I need, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I need to go into holding for separation. Okay. I'm uh, seven, how many miles? Five miles to go. Any flight? Oh, the glare! How that is cool! What a cool effect! The glare of the sun reflecting in the river. Again, that's something I really love about Microsoft. Those those effects are really cool. Good. Right. Parpy seem to be a little bit mislocated. There, um, they look like they are right at the edge of the th threshold. Maybe it's just a visual. No, that's definitely too early. So I'm going to go with the touchdown markers. Ignore the parpies. One thousand. One thousand is checked. Radio altimeter doesn't match up, so that's good. So I am allowing myself to get a little bit high. So I'm going to go with three white, one red. But then we should be a little bit better on the path. Minimum. Continue. 500. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch off the flight director. I'm going to put bird on. Four. There we go. I don't get it. Sometimes the reverse activates from my Bravo throttle quad and sometimes it doesn't. All right, it doesn't matter. Right, we've got spoilers, no reverse. These are now that's how pros do it. Normally the um, puppies should be located at the touchdown point, right? Yeah, not at the threshold. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Do you have a scenery for you? Yeah, I do actually. Okay. Maybe you should report that to the developer. <laughs> it looks like a pro. Right, there we go. And uh, we're going to vacate. Is it left side? I think so, right? Yeah, left. Okay. So runway is clear in about uh, 10 seconds. I was looking for terminal, but it doesn't have a terminal. <laughs> Just got some, some hot. No, it's wrong. Uh, the terminal is on the right side. The left side is kind of, I don't know, maybe general aviation or so. Okay. Well, there's lots of people here. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'll tell you what, then I turn around. <laughs> it looks like toilets. Oh, oh yeah, there's a terminal. <laughs> Never been here. Hang on.
So we're gonna jet blast the people behind me now. Ay 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 ay. Oh, that's what's <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah. Right, don't tell my boss. So let me just check runway. There's Diddy coming in. Yeah, he's like, I didn't see that. Please right. <laughs> Please let this end. <laughs> Please let me get off this aircraft. This will be one of the situations where the, the first officer said, no, we have to go right. And the captain says, no, no, I know, I know we have to go left. And the FO would go, no, we have to go right. Look, I'm the captain. I know we have to go left. And then you find out the FO was actually correct. <laughs> oh, then you've got to find excuses. <laughs> right. I think Didi looks all right. So let me just go quickly across the runway. Have you ever taken the wrong taxiway? Yes, of course I've taken the wrong taxiway. Paris, for example, is one of those airports where you can go really quickly uh, in the wrong direction, um, especially nighttime. So nighttime rain, you have to be, you know, so careful. Um, you can go into the wrong direction so quickly. <laughs> the other left, yeah. <laughs> So let's see, do we have parking spots, gate, let's go gate one, no, uh, let's go here, and that should be straight ahead, right? Where is it? Hang on. Where's my marshaller? Oh, there, <laughs> this is right front, 12 o'clock, found her. So let's quickly park and then uh, have a look at the other landings. Who's, who's next? I think Captain Alex is next. Oh, Jalend just landed. Okay, Jalend just touched down. Sorry, Jalend. Just a couple of seconds too late. And uh, Jalend, it's, it's, it's right. You have to turn right, just in case you missed it. Right, okay. <laughs> Not left. Do you get a fine? No. Uh, so th there are certain things which are completely human. Um, you may get told off by ATC, but uh, you usually don't get fined for that. Um, you get fined if yeah, you right. <laughs> you get fined if you do things on purposely wrong, uh, or you go. You know, you get fined for um, avoiding requested taking the the wrong de you know departure route as an example, right? So you cause more um, noise than you're allowed to. I guess uh, a runway incursion would be, wouldn't be that easy. No, so, I mean, anything that's dangerous, obviously that has to be investigated. Um, that can definitely be an issue. So let me just have a look here. Where's my Flow Pro app? Flow Pro, there we go. So, oh, hang on. Camera, 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 there we go. So, that. Okay. Right, let's have a look at the other landings. 
I, I, I would, I know you would have to talk to a apron controller, and I'm sure. Let's say if you talk to an apron controller at Frankfurt Airport, as an example, I'm sure. And and you asked him how often per day he sees an aircraft take the wrong taxiway. Passengers the I don't know. I, I I can only guess, but I would say at least in his eight-hour shift or six-hour shift, I would say at least five aircraft minimum. And Frankfurt is actually not the most complicated airport out there. So Paris, I'm sure in Paris, Charles de Gaulle, man, I mean, it, Yeah, and, and that's why. So people ask me, you know, how does flight simming help you with the real world flying? Well, the the moment that airport add-ons become so realistic um, is already a big help. So actually, from my captain's training on the 737, I actually bought London Heathrow. I bought Paris, Charles de Gaulle. I bought Frankfurt. I bought Rome. I bought, what else did I buy as an add-on? Um... Uh, just strictly for practicing taxing around and and having a you know a good visual impression of of where the taxiways are where the terminals are um you know where the hot spots are and that already helped me tremendously for my real world flying madrid yeah madrid absolutely <clears throat> mr weird fox amsterdam madrid the other two airports yeah 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 absolutely Uh, Istanbul, well, yeah, the, the new Istanbul airport, that would definitely help as well. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Chilenza, thank God my landing wasn't on stream. <laughs> no worries. My first landing was was um, interesting today. But, I mean, that was just so typical. I mean, I made a video talking about and, and telling people to look out for flat three landings and how the flare there is still broken. <laughs> What do I do? Flap three landing, ploink. <laughs> I run into the same trap. Uh, you want to hear from your expected for how about uh, Chicago? Chicago, I've not been to Chicago for many, many years, but but at Force 5, I've, I've downloaded Toronto, I've bought uh, Detroit, I've bought Dallas. Um, what else did I get? Um, I already got Vancouver, I got um, Montreal, and um, we will fly to Montreal on stream, maybe Tuesday, we'll see, maybe Tuesday, because I am flying to Montreal in real life next month, so um, yeah, that's another airport I want to practice. Dang, that's a good that's a good question, can you deduct that from tax? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I can't even deduct sunglasses as an example or or uniform shoes. Why? The argument is well you can you can wear these for private uh stuff as well. So, you know, you, you can wear those in private. And I'm like, okay, well would I would I wear black shoes? Well, maybe in parts, but I mean same same with the suitcase. You know how many suitcases I've gone through in my life? You would not believe how often my suitcase is damaged and sometimes you wonder whether or not they dropped it somewhere on the apron and a 747 rolled over it that's how it looks like sometimes I, I can't imagine how anything that steady can be destroyed in such a manner and so I've, I don't know how many how many suitcases I've, I've gone through in my life and and every time when I buy it well I mean you get some money back obviously when you, when something gets broken um, but still, I mean, you know, like 90%, 95% of my suitcases I use for just for, you know, working. Uh, but because of the 0 0.5 or 5% of times that I can use my suitcase also for private travels, that's then the reason not to allow it for, for tax deduction. Yeah. So, hey, day and how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Just buy the pink ones. 
No, I'm not allowed to. It has to be black, gray, silver. Yeah, I think that's it. You, you can't. You're not allowed to buy, buy green, pink, red. No, it's not allowed. Jeremiah coming in. And yeah, that looks like a greaser. Nice. Yeah, definitely greaser. A little bit right of center line, but recovering now. <laughs> Lol, it's a GPU. That's because I have my GPU at the aircraft. Ah, uh, enough. You mean Welcome parking spots? Welcome to the Captain Black Box Twitch channel subscriber experience. Could new subscribers please make your way uh, to the first be. class cabin, there should be. where complimentary drinks, snacks, hey, and I, flight Cooper. entertainment will be served. Thank you, Carl. Thank you so so much. That's really kind. Carl, thank you so much for the 15 months. I think it's a bit longer than that, isn't it? But because of that uh, commotion with YouTube and Twitch and so on, thank you so much, Carl. I hope you're doing well. How was your weekend? Did he, I think Tiddy is like doing um, touch and goes or something. Yeah, I don't have to, I don't own the Phantom, so the model batching doesn't work with the Phantom here. You got a Bonanza, a very fast Bonanza. <laughs> air, air GPU. So here we go, Captain Alex. Thank you much, Kavari. Yeah, we did uh, three flights today. Um, so we flew um, Ljubljana to Prishna and back again. Also very beautiful, very scenic. And now we just uh, done another flight on the Columbia tour. Tuesday, I plan to fly with the Ini builds A320 Neo. Give that a try. Runway is clear. Thank you. Your dad bought a gaming PC over his company. Yeah, well, that's 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 okay. I mean, you know. The worst thing is if your luggage gets broken while you are, and let's say you're flying somewhere to the US or something, and then your suitcase comes out with a like a ten centimeter big hole in it. Yeah, he got trouble. He, he just, you know. Another interesting story. Is it South America? It is, isn't it? There are some airports. I mean, there's been cases where crews have come home and they find a hole. Well, actually, two holes. So, so one on each side. And so apparently they have what they do is they punch through with a metal rod so it's a machine it punches through and takes a test uh or it tests for for drugs <laughs> so instead of like opening the suitcase or or uh, you know x-raying it they they kind of punch through it with a metal rod uh <laughs> they, they ruined the, the suitcase completely by doing that. Are they stupid? No, that they, 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 it's it's happened so many times. I've had, I've heard so many stories uh, with that. So I'm just wondering if that's still still a thing. If anybody else heard about that? <laughs> They're not supposed to be in your 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 luggage, Paul. You're supposed to take them out. Here's Captain Alex. Yeah, that looks very nice indeed. GG's. And then we've got Brennolds. Yeah, so Jelen, that actually happens regularly as well. So someone, you know, so people being in, in a hurry and people having the same looking hand luggage, 
Um, I've I've had that heard that so many times. People take the wrong wrong luggage, and then and then they race off and they don't realize until it's too late maybe. And a lot of people have you know their valuables. I mean not valuables, but but they have like maybe their their uh, passport and and um, you know their uh, their wallet in there as well. <laughs> Be Chris. Uh, no, I think I think he's good. Yoda played played the go around song and I I literally jumped off out of my chair. It was so loud on my my headphones. <laughs> Not the check. No, no. We, Ebersbrook, we talk about hand luggage. Uh, that looks very nice indeed. Yeah, that looks like a nice greaser. Um, so, yeah, we talk about hand luggage. Yeah, yeah. So, it's people taking the wrong hand luggage with them. What a gorgeous area. Look at that. Again, I mean, I can. The beauty here of Colombia. Incredible. I mean, we've seen already so many lovely airports and areas, and how cool. Nice. So, thank you, everyone, flying along. Thanks for being a part of this group flight. And um, if you like... I don't know exactly when the next group flight will take place. Uh, not Tuesday, I know that, but... Um, um, well, actually, I've got, I'm going to stream Tuesday and then I'm off for work until... Well, then we've got Easter. So I think after that. So it's going to be coming Tuesday and then the week after Tuesday as well. I think that's what I'm going to do. Emma's broker, thank you so much. Yeah, guys, have a great week. Um, stay safe, stay positive, everyone. And uh, oh, Brenner will have to squeeze in somewhere on the side there. Yeah, we'll park uh, after Julinda, I think. Okay. Yeah, so stay positive. I will see you again, if you like, on Tuesday. Thank you so much again for all the support. Thank you for all that kindness. And I will see you very soon. My dear moderators, as always, thank you so, so, so much. See you soon.